Good. We on? Good. I'm fucking on. And for my entire show, 3rd of December, making it official. <laughs> oh, is that? That's what I mean. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of the Murph Matai Show! Back! Back! <laughs> In this next song, you must march around the room. Here we go! Hey, I know what the fuck I'm doing. Just sit down in the chair. How you doing? I'm um, fucking stressed to the eyeballs, but we good. Yeah, we had a, a week, <laughs> off, week off last week. Because I was stressed to the eyeballs. Yeah. No. No. Uh, we'll, let, we'll let you divulge in your time whenever you feel like you, you want to. Yeah. Um, until then. So you said I'm leading today's. You're leading. Podcast. You're you're the you're the you're the lead. I'm following. And today's sort of two sections segued into one another. Okay. Cool. I'm intrigued. First up, I'm intrigued, Adam. First up, I'm going to start with. Um, I recently had a client come to visit me. New client, haven't seen him before, uh, and it was referred to by a friend of mine, um, basically saying, "We've seen." So this kid is a 12 year old. Mm-hmm. Okay, he's state football, mm-hmm. so good footballer, for, especially like for a, a, like AFL. Uh, yes. Yeah. Aussie rules. Yep. 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 Um, proper football, not soccer football. <laughs> Pushing buttons. <laughs> um, yeah. So twelve-year-old state footballer, uh, getting keen on the basketball side of things. Boo. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> real sport. So getting keen on real sport. Um, so my friend's like, I wanted to come see you just to have a look at a few things. The biggest issue he's got at the moment is a lot of hip flexor issues, hip flexor issues on his right side, mm-hmm. kicking leg. Um, we want to figure out what's going on there first, and mm-hmm. then he can sort of decide, does he want to stay with football, move on to basketball, whatever was going on. Mm-hmm. I'm like, cool, bring him in. Has he seen anyone yet? Seen a physio? Okay, I can cool. feel you this is going. <laughs> Okay, cool. Um, come in, I'll have a look, see what's going on, I'll see if I can make some sort of diagnosis or figure something out, and I'll help you out if I can. He comes in. Now, before I go into this, this next part... I feel your energy already. Okay. Before I go to this next part... Go. 12-year-old. Uh-huh. Footballer. Uh-huh. Right-footed. Uh-huh. Kicks with the right leg. Uh-huh. Cool. Has hip flexor issues on the right side. Left side is fine. Uh-huh. What would you, even without diagnosis, because really to diagnose someone or really to uh, assess someone, you need to have an idea on what it could be to figure out if it is that or not, right? Yeah. So if someone comes in with a hip flexor issue, you're going to go, mm, I think it could be this, let's figure out if it is that or not. And then you can go deeper into the assessment. Mm-hmm. What would you think it possibly could be, considering this kid's never weight trained, never done anything but football? The instability in the pelvis. Yeah. What area... Do you think it could be? Would you Would you think it would be? I'd look at hamstring glute. Oh, cool. Same page. Hey! I was like, I was nervous. I was like, am I passing a test here? All right, cool. So that's what I get when you ask me questions. I'm like, is there a specific <laughs> answer? So I'm glad to put it back on you. Okay, okay. So my first thought was exactly that. He yeah. comes in, never done weight training before. Um, what he has, but I didn't know that at the point. Um, never done weight training before from mm. what I understood. 12-year-old, just football, only on field stuff, kicked ball. Right, right leg. Kicks ball. Kicks ball, right leg. Kicks ball, run. Cool. These are my notes on running. Yeah. Kick yeah. ball, right leg. Yeah. Um, based on that, I'm thinking, never done weight training. There must be some sort of imbalance somewhere. Mm. I doubt he's just pulled a hip flexor muscle mm. and it's lasted this long, which is about, he said it's just before COVID hit. So what's that? In, Seven like, months? Six oh, months? Oh, so like first COVID. Yeah, first COVID. Not yeah. fake COVID recently. No, not fake COVID, real COVID. <laughs> okay. Cool. So that's what, six months of a hip flexor? No, it wasn't strength. fake COVID. It just wasn't as long. <laughs> if you know SA, you know what's you're going good, on. You're there. good. Um, so okay, six, flexor... six months of a hip flexor strain. Ooh, okay. Now, hip flexor strains don't last that long. No. Unless you're just abusing the fuck out of it. Wow. Which could be. Energy. I feel but it. <laughs> they don't last that long. Anyway. He said, I went to the field, his mum told me, went to the physio, the physio is giving him, he said, it's a hip flexor strain, I'm giving him some exercises. And I said, all right, show me your exercises. Kickball. <laughs> High knee running. Okay. Uh, a skips and pigeon stretch. Okay. So you're stretching your glutes. Mm-hmm. And the way he showed me is also a bit of hamstring in there as well. Mm-hmm. So you're stretching your glutes and hamstrings and making them even longer. Mm-hmm than what I would assume they already are. Mm-hmm. You're doing high knee running, 
which is tightening up the hip flexors even more. Mm -hmm. And your A skip, which I agreed with, A skip, cool, looking at running technique, but then watching his technique had a lot of work to do on it. So completely incorrect running technique. So what was your, okay, yeah, keep going. Okay, so I'm like, okay, cool. Seen all that now, what, have you done the weight training? Just confirming this. Yeah, I do bench press, bicep curls, and leg extensions. No, you're good, bro. <laughs> okay. There's no hamstring there, what's cool, cool. Get working on that. All right, good. So let's have an assessment. Let's look at hamstring strength. Now let's look at your uh, hamstring length, strength, glute um, strength, medius and maximus, and your glute uh, flexibility, mm -hmm. mobility. All of it poor. Mm -hmm. Poor, 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 poor. Cross the board. <laughs> okay. Cool. Let's look at your hip flexor mobility. Poor. Mm -hmm. Let's look at your hip flexor strength. Strong. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. TFL, tight. Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's eliminate all hip flexor work mm. in training for three weeks mm -hmm. and let's just dominate in your posterior strength. Mm -hmm. Go on, I'm just going to see how that goes. Does that sound like a decent way to go about... Without assessing said child. Well, that's with an assessment because I looked at all the assessment of... No, without me assessing. Without you assessing. That sounds, yeah, like yeah. A, yep. sounds like a reasonable approach, I yep. think. So here's my question. Why do you think... The professionals, like above us, as in physios. There's some mad energy coming from the I guess what I'm getting at is I'm very frustrated yeah. with the with, physios with the, with who the are supposed to be the up. very top no. of the diagnosis in sporting injuries. It depends what physio clinic it was at, what the learning is, but it might not be. It, 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 you know, you're getting a third hand, you have to talk to physio directly. I understand your frustration, right? Yeah. But I don't know the situation. Well, again, that's even, that's another point then again. If he doesn't understand, then that's also bad enough. The person who's... No, that's, that's correct. Side. That's correct, right? So now, even if the now, physio has said, yeah, okay, you've got to do all this stuff, off you go, and the kid's gone away and the mum's gone away, mm -hmm. like, mm, this is what we got from that. This mm -hmm. is what we understand. That's still bad. I'm going to try and like tame the beast a little bit. You try. Because this, this beast is... You try. This is energy. <laughs> okay? <laughs> try. Um, I understand there are terrible physios and there are fantastic physios. Correct. There are terrible SNCs and there are fantastic SNCs. Correct. There are terrible chefs and there are fantastic chefs. Correct. Across, across the board. Yes. Right? Across the board. Now, without having a chat and, and doing an assessment and seeing what the outcome is, I'd... I'd be going, all right, cool. What have you been told? Show me some things. Here's what I recommend, or here's what I would be doing. Mm -hmm. Let's see what gets better. So without without your intervention, oh, seven months, long time, from, from whatever you've said, and from what you've said, yes. I'll be like, it doesn't sound like muscular injury. It sounds like something that is repetitively occurring. So instability, imbalance, right? Yeah. So what I'll be saying, I'll be like, look, it hasn't got better in this time doing this, however you've been doing the exercises. Let's try an intervention for three to four weeks, whatever whatever my intervention would be. Um, and let's see if it gets better. Let's see if the pain goes, subsides, or the movement gets better, da 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 And then I would be like, after that time, be like, all right, cool, well, has it helped? Because you might prescribe something, and then it doesn't get better, you know, yeah. and it's deep issue. So you know what I mean? Like, so I'm not sort of tooting my own horn saying, I've done the perfect program. It's more the fact that it wasn't looked at as a whole. You don't believe it was looked at as a whole? Well, you in the room, <clears> the I guess, have, you I guess, have you talked to the physio? No. I guess the two things. No. From their understanding, mm -hmm. they don't understand. They, I guess that's the probably the bigger issue right now, underlying issue, mm -hmm. is they, the professional here, mm -hmm. hasn't given them a program that they understand mm -hmm. to do properly. Yep. And that's an issue. Correct. That's an issue. So you know what I own a physio clinic, right? Yes. Now, my clinic is different to other clinics. Correct. Okay. Um, same as our training is different to other trainees, trainers' trainings. Correct. Right? And I, I do know there are some clinics out there. Yes. Very popular. Yes. Okay. That do not go into depth of their assessments and do not go into... This is where I'm going. ...individuality of their client programming and individuality of their <clears throat> assessments. And they give general um, therapies that, that are designed to keep the patient coming back to the physio mm -hmm. rather than, um, healing the patient's eels or helping the patient with the eels. I do know that. And I understand your frustration. Now I feel for myself getting into it at the physio side of things, well, I have a fantastic physio, mm -hmm. right? She's amazing. Right. And I know 
the assessment protocol that is done and is thorough and blah, 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 mm. whatever, right? So for me, it's a matter of going, all right, cool, this is, this is what you've been given has been average, okay? And like I said, here's my intervention. Here's why you would pay the money to come see me rather than can go there. It was actually a discussion I had um, recently about um, like private health and high caps and that kind of shit, right? Where the investment in said physio or allied health or whatever is so low from the, the customer's perspective that it kind of brings the value of the service down because and then the service doesn't provide as well. Mm-hmm. If you're paying $12 a session to see a physio, you don't really value it as much. But yeah. also from the other side, the professional can be like, well, you're not going to fuck away anyway. So yeah. I'll give you a rub and come back next week. Yeah. You know, and then you start looking at the appointment like go to like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, rather than being thorough each time, exercise progressions, whatever. So, I, you know what I mean? So I understand your frustrations. Yeah. I feel like I just don't let it frustrate me anymore because I'm like, there's yeah, shit. I'm, see, I'm letting it out right now because okay, I, I didn't let it out yesterday. I know, I know. I know you said to me, I want to talk about some shit. And I was yes. like, okay. Yeah. So in front of my client. You were very placid. I'm cool. Calm. Let's just do what I've got to do. Yeah. Now, now I can let better. it out. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's a message. That's a message right there. If things aren't getting better, right, and you're going to see someone, whether it's us, all right, trainer, physio, fucking chiro, doctor, whoever, if you're doing intervention and things aren't progressing as you would expect them to progress, logically, you're not going to be better in like three days or four days or whatever, all right? If it's been a long time, things aren't getting better, then go somewhere else. Get mm-hmm. checked out elsewhere. Well, hence why they've come to you. Yeah. You know, and this has only come into your sphere because your friend has said, hey man, can you have a look and have a, have a sus? Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. You know. Um, I, I mean, think this is something that we've, I guess, been treated by, but we initiated this in the first place, was we got taught by Donald, best. by Czech. Some the best. To say, if the injury is here, don't just look here. Yep. It could be anywhere up or down the chain. Yep. Look everywhere. Our kinesiology background was extensive, but not just that it was extensive, it was rammed into us. Yep. And that they made us care. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, <laughs> they, exactly. they, wouldn't, they wouldn't take us on as, I mean, as we know, Donna, as we've mentioned here before, Donna was like a mentor to us. Yep. He wouldn't do that if he didn't think we cared. Correct. So they sort of like, fucking care. Yep. Or get done. Or get called out. Or get called Donald out. Donald still calls me out. When you see some <laughs> shit on the gram. I get I get told off, you get told off, you yeah. got told off last year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's what that's what we need. And we've discussed before. That's what is needed for us. Yeah. That's what we need in that industry. But the thing is that what I've realized yeah. and what I'm privy to now is that you're not allowed to necessarily do that in that industry. You can't be a physio and then like effectively call out or say another physio shit as yeah. part of your registration with the board. Yeah. You know, you have to project this image, which is where I think s and I'm going to flip it around again a little bit. It's where the s and performance and fitness industry isn't um, uh, as forward thinking. You know what I mean? Like if you've got a, a board or you've got a, your registration and in that it's like you can't bring the industry to disrepute. You can't go and call out someone online or whatever. Like, you are always to do it, right? But as a, as a man, you can't do this stuff, right? Then the industry looks like it's here, mm-hmm. right? Which is what, what you just said before. You looked before. Physio is seen as here. Doctors refer to it. Clubs know it. Everybody, you know, in sport, athletics, fitness training, whatever, knows about physiotherapy because it's like this. Whereas, like, in the fitness industry, or the S&C, performance coaching, it's all here. There's, no, there's nothing to mandate us going, we can't do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So as an industry, it's like this, but then you get this kind of shit. Like, like trust me, physio, good physiotherapists, great physiotherapists know the shit that is out there. And, it's, and, and it is a constant frustration of those physios mm-hmm. that this shit comes through mm-hmm. because those people don't necessarily go to another physio. They might get injured as a 12-year-old, right? They'll get injured. Go to see a physio, doesn't get fixed, turns out to be a shit physio. They will never know though, because they've come to see you and you've gone, hang on, let's look at this, this, and this. And they go, oh well, shit, my experience with physios are crap. Yeah, all of a sudden they put the physios in a bucket. Correct. And, that, and that's not the case. So that's what happened with chiropractors for a long time. Correct. Yep. Right? And that's the thing. So, and that's why you need to kind of have this understanding that, okay, cool, it's not that they're not, it's not that they're all up, seen like this. Within the industry, there, there needs to be change, right? Yeah. But, to be registered as a physio to practice, you have to 
you know, abide by these standards. And the therapeutic side of things and, and the actual, um, so diagnosis, assessment, and then program um, facilitation may not necessarily be up to standard that we would expect. You know, yeah. we've, we've been brought up, like you said, with that very high standards of expectation, mm-hmm. right? And I think about it like myself, I haven't been to uni for exercise science or health or whatever, you've only just gone the last three years, right? Take away your uni, the standards that we were held at allowed us to then have conversations with university graduates because they weren't held to our standards, mm-hmm. you know, and our education and our um, background is extensive in another area, you know what I mean? And we'll get to your uni stuff, right, because you've been in it now, but it's this whole, you know, if you're not held to such and such a standard, then you can get away with the crap. Yep. You know, and that's where you have to kind of look at going, all right, well, cool. It's unfortunate. I'd be saying to your client, this is where I, mean, I was here like fucking six years ago, right? You know, I was here where I'm like, all right, I understand you've had a bad experience and this hasn't helped, but I can do this, but I'm not a great physio. Yeah. I'm an excellent performance coach. Yeah. Right? But excellent performance coach and great physio would be like this. Yeah. But excellent performance coach and fucking average physio would be like this. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you've got to look at where you sit on that spectrum and provide the information. So then then the future, say you're not around or the kid moves elsewhere or something happens and he gets injured, he just doesn't have to go, shit, I have to fly back to Adelaide to see Merv. Yeah. I can go see a great physio where I'm at. Yeah. You know, I see great allied health where I'm at. You know, and it's a matter of getting that out there. And that's a big thing for, for me recently is like putting out and I'm starting to process and think about how to do it but putting out more of those values about standards expectations what we expect what I expect in my business you know I'm looking to hire new people at the moment right one of the first questions that I say to them is how are you going to be excellent as a performance coach or physio or whatever because I'm not interested in the shit anymore you know I'm interested in going yeah you're crap not anymore not my trans of shit at all but like I'm not interested in going I want to hire someone for a role. Mm-hmm. I want to hire someone who's going to be excellent. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's that thing, how to put that out there. You know, that's why I said to you the other day, when you put your Instagram thing up and you didn't name names in the gym, I'm like, fucking name names, man. Mm-hmm. You know, and they call it out and say, this is crap. You know, and if you, if, you know, it's recognized, you're not going to go and there's, there are <laughs> legal avenues. So you're not going to go down and, and um, uh, what do you call it? Um, that slander anyone or call out that kind of bullshit, right? None, none of that stuff. But if you see crap, you can say, hey, I see crap at this place. What are they going to be like? No, you don't. I'm like, well, actually, yes, I do. Yeah, you can have a conversation. We can prove that. You know what I mean? It, yeah. it starts a conversation. And <clears throat> unfortunately, people can get butt hurt by it. You know, and you don't, I know what you're like. You don't want to put it out there. You don't want to put things out there because you're kind of like, nice dude, don't want to start too much stuff. Right? But at the end of the day, in order to push our industry forwards, in order to help um, clients like, like, 12 year old, the parents, whoever, anyone's gone to see shit people before understand that hang on, the shit is like this, the good is like this, and it's excellent like this. You know, you've got to be able to put that stuff out there. Yeah. And we're lucky because we're in the industry where we can do that at yeah. the end of the day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hmm. Do you feel like I tamed the beast a little bit? I feel a bit more relaxed. <laughs> I don't know if it's because you did it or I just got it off my chest. <laughs> I don't even think I slept well last night because you just fucked <laughs> I think it just. <laughs> And I, again, I don't know why, <sighs> what happened, whether it was a lack of communication, yep. bad communication, yep. or lack of caring. Or lack of assessment, or lack like, of understanding. Exactly. So I don't know what right. it was, if it was all of it, where a couple, one chair. of it, don't know where. Yep. But no matter what, it was frustration because it happened for a long time. Yep. He kept just getting some stretching and massage and basic, te- uh, basic exercises, and there still was no deeper assessment. Yep. And to me, that's just care. Overall, it's care or it's business because at the end of the day, remember, physio But it's, that is, still comes down to care. Well, not Because really. we still run a business, but we care about it. And that's why yeah, business but is, if the, is if successful. If physio works for someone and that person doesn't care, it doesn't mean this physio doesn't care. But if, he's only, if he or she right, yeah. has only 15 minutes to do something with someone yeah. and have, in that time they have to <clears> assess, <throat> um, assess, communicate, and then write a program for them, you're not going to get anything of substance. That's a very different thing in our industry, again, then, isn't it? Because mm. say, all right, I've only got 15 minutes. Obviously, we do 45s in our sessions. Mm-hmm. They say I'm going to have 15 minutes. Now, after that time, well, we're done. Mm-hmm. But with, I don't know about yourself, I'm sure you do, but with myself, okay, I've got 45 minutes. After that time, I'm done, but not really because you can hang around and do something I can help you out still or give me a call or I'll send you some stuff to do afterwards. Mm-hmm. 
Here's a video of me. Here's the exercise. Here's a video of me. Doing an exercise. <laughs> Flexing. <laughs> um, you know, there's, it's not really like, that's the end of my time with you. But that's not to say this physio hasn't done that. Well, if he has, he hasn't done it. He or she. We gotta, we gotta, you got called out in this. We don't have this. Um, <laughs> we don't know. No. They, they may have, they may not have. But exactly. if they have, they still haven't done a great job yeah. because they're still doing the same shit. Yeah. They still got the same issues. Mm. So whether it's a, a lack of education on the, the deeper levels of assessment, which you wouldn't think so being a physio, or the lack of knowledge on kinesiology and biomechanics about... Or KPIs from the business. Like if, you, if you're yeah. a boss, remember, remember this. You, we come from a position where we don't work for someone. And we don't have stipulations on how many sessions we have to do a week, mm -hmm. how many sessions we have to do a day, how much money we're bringing in, how many follow-ups we're doing, blah, 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 blah. Yep. Whereas if, if you've got physiotherapy working for someone who's like, okay, I need to see 15 sessions in a day, you're looking at your 20-minute sessions, whatever, do you have that time to, be able to do that stuff? Yeah. Or do you not? And you know, if they're working, let's say, 40-hour weeks at 15 sessions you know what, you can four sessions an hour or three sessions an hour, all right? But it's 120 sessions in a week. That's a lot of sessions. You know what I mean? Like, can you can you effectively manage that? And unless you put your admin time and this other stuff on that, but you know, we don't work for someone, mm. all right? We work for ourselves, so we can. If I want to be like, I want to go for an hour and a half with someone, I want to do it. Yeah. If I want to go for you know two hours or I want to put in some time in the evening, I'm gonna do that. You asked me before, why do I start at 5 a.m.? Because I'm morning. Mm. You know, I'm not mandated to be, or not mandated, or I'm not told your shift starts at eight, you finish at four. In that time, you've got to fit in 25 people. Yep. You know what I mean? So you kind of come from that as well, where you've got to take that objective view of, okay, well, what situation is the physio in? Are they a new grad? You know, and they're just, I just need a job. You know, do they hate their job? Do they hate being able to do, not being able to effectively care for someone as much as they want to? Yeah. You know, all these things come in. And this is a conversation we're going to have another time when some things have gone together all right, about this, about that industry as, as a whole. But you've got to kind of take a step back and be like, all right, you've been, as, as, the, as the patient and the client, you've been effectively, maybe not mismanaged, but have been managed as well as you could have been. Here's what I can do and why I do it. And you've got an hour to assess them plus phone time or whatever, and then you can chill with it and relax and whatever. And you're not rushed to find out, okay, here's your hip knee ankle assessment, what's happening with your load back. Okay, I'll find you see a tight hip bank. Here's a little program I'm going to pop off. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you've got to kind of come from that view and be like, well, I don't know what that side of things are. From what I'm seeing, it's a little bit more, there's more to it and we can get, we can spend the time to take you through things so you understand it. And then ideally they come back and see you, you know what I mean? And then you get another hour session on, on top yep. of that, you know? Yep. Um, but it's a matter of, you have to kind of be a bit more objective with it. Like I get frustrated every fucking day. At physiotherapy, at PT, at sports science, at fucking all this shit. Every day. But I kind of go, you, you know how I sleep at night? Not much, but <laughs> I, I sleep well because I'm like, I don't let it affect me because I know they're doing their thing for whatever reason, yeah. but it's up to me, it's my responsibility to put it out there and say, this is shit and what? Yeah. You know, so through what I do and through how I do things. So let's put that out there. If you don't care, if you're too stringent on your timelines. Mm -hmm. Come see us. If you're... Good job. <laughs> There you go. Um, care more. Care more. Care more. Or find a way. Yes. Find a way to help care for the human you're dealing with. Tell your boss to leave and come on a Murph and Martyrs. We'll get you on the show. You can talk some shit. Talk some shit. Right. But I would love to do that. You know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to find... <laughs> we can blow their face out. <laughs> I'm going to find a physio that hates a job. Right? And because of this reason. Because they can't put the care in. Because like you know, 15 minute sessions or whatever it is, and then come in and talk about it from their perspective. Yeah. Or someone who's maybe been there and is now not there. Yeah. I would like to get Tristan on the show. Done. Because he'd be cool, because he loves his job. Done. He does, it's he perfect. goes above and beyond for his clients. He's an advertiser, it's famous now. He's a big boy, big time. Big boy. Yeah, we get him on, that'd be sick. Cool. Yeah, was that the, did we, did we cover the segue? Well, no, but I think you're running out of time and the segue may go into yeah, a I'm, solid 45 minutes. I'm going to run, I'm going to like literally run and then, uh, and we will, you know what, write it down, next episode, we'll go into the segue. Part two. Part two, which is the segue, actual episode. Done? Alright, back soon.